Now if you watched yesterday's video, we tried putting the vise up on the milling machine and we found that there was little, like those, those clamps, little, they were called T-slots. Someone in the comments said T-slots, so that was a big help. These things here, so these fit down in the, in the bed of the mill um, and, they're, and they're too wide, they're like one millimeter or one and a half millimeters too wide, I've not measured it yet. And so I spoke to my machinist, my machinist and I said, is this a standard thing? Is there like two standards or something? And he says, some like, these things typically don't fit or quite often don't fit. You have to make your own ones or machine them or modify them, which is quite handy because I now have a mill to do that. It would have been impossible to do it before. So we're gonna put the vise on today and that'll, that'll sort of open things up. Already I have been, if you have a look over here, mind that, if you look at this, so I've drawn up a rough shape of a spinner. That is gonna get cut from titanium. Truthfully, I will almost certainly run out of time today. Um, by the time we get the sort of vice on, I've got to go and you know, pay some invoices and answer some emails and things like, things, things like that right now. It's not just a case of putting the vice on and clamping it. We've got to like modify, we've got to modify the, the T-slots and things ourselves. So we're gonna try and do that. It is well into the afternoon now. It's amazing how long it takes to sort of get these things set up. The vise is now fully in, look at that. Gonna be way, way handier and easier. Learn that, or should I say learning, I'm learning that with a machine like this, you know, you're gonna have to make, you know, you want to fix things, you want to, you know, do things and you do have to you have to make it yourself and you know it's good because this is the machine you need to make it yourself so with machining it turns out there's lots of things like way more things that you need to make for yourself you have to make your own tools so you can make the stuff you want to make if that makes sense and i didn't really appreciate how much of of that was involved in this and i'm sort of just slowly getting that just now spinner blank it's not a case of just putting this in the vise. I'm gonna to have to like, the vise kind of, it's hard to explain, but um, you know, the vise is sort of an overall large vise and you sort of have to make little metal bars and accurate bars to sort of support this up in the air because you can't just clamp it in. It's got to be really accurate. So that is the spinner blank in there on the vise. It's crudely done, we're not, I kinda just want to get some stuff done today. You know, like we've got a, like an aluminum bar in there kind of holding it up. It's not ideal, but there's no force or anything on it really. I'm using a five bit, I'm using a five millimeter end mill and just doing a little 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter square, just a couple of mil deep and that's it. And what that's gonna do, hopefully, is give me sort of a way to fix the spinner upside down and I can clamp it in the center and that square will keep it, well, square. And then I can just machine around the outside. That's the plan, almost certainly won't have time for that today, but you know, we'll see how far we get. Truthfully, this is getting kind of exciting. That's the square pocket cut. What I might try and do now is put in the bearing, not in that square pocket, but mill a hole to accept the bearing. I'm not sure, I've not tried anything of precision on this machine yet. Like, I'm not sure if I've got like 
the you know the diameters of the cutter right to what it's milling because I've just been cutting random pockets and things like this here. If you've been watching the last few days you'll know that's what <laughs> I've been cutting basically. I'm just thinking that while it's in there and while it's lined up and centered I may as well cut this you know at, at this time you know why not. Actually scratch that. I forgot to measure the hole I just did. I did a 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter um, pocket one millimeter deep. I think it's one millimeter deep. However, it is 16.9 millimeters by 16.9 millimeters, which is almost 17. So allowing, so allowing for that little point one of a difference, it's actually five millimeters off, which is perfect because the cutter is five millimeters diameter. I forgot to include the offset for the cutter. Um, start again. So making progress, getting there. Not showing you everything I've been doing, but this is what I've got so far. So I've got I've got the center for the bearing there. Truthfully, it's a little bit too big. The bearing goes in, but it doesn't hold in. I, I have to make it a bit smaller on the next one, but it's okay for just now. I've got a square hole on one side and a square hole on the other. The plan with that is that I'll get a plate, perhaps aluminium, um, because it's just a muck about. It's not like a, a thing that'll be long term, and I'll make the male version of this square hole. So this is not 12 millimeters, that was too small. It's 13 millimeters exactly. And so I will make a 13 millimeter island, I think they call it. This can then just slot on, uh, drill a hole through that plate and I can bolt it on. And this will basically be kind of slightly suspended in the air. And that way I can mill all around the outside, bevel it, which is like the thing I've been striving for since I started mucking around with spinners, um, so I don't have to stand hand grinding and make it completely out of balance. This should be a balanced spinner. That's the plan anyway. So go around the outside, bevel on one side, flip it over, bevel it on the other side. And then that's, that's it for the body. The buttons are something else entirely. Um, but yeah, a little bit more progress than I thought today. It's nearly the end of the day, so I'm not sure how much more I'm gonna get done. So this has all been cut down by one millimeter. I've left a one millimeter high island here. The purpose is that I take the spinner here with a square hole and then I place it on here, like so. But you see, do you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but look, yep, yeah, there we go, you see that? So that island is a little bit too small for this. So I'll do it again probably tomorrow. Um, and I'll make the island a little bit bigger. It should handle this. I'll drill a hole down through the island. That way I can clamp this on and we can skim around the outside. So what I'll do is I will call this part one. This video will be part one of making a spinner. The bearing's too loose in this anyway, so I have to redo this, but that's good. All the programming is still in there. I just need to put, you know, cut a new one, put it in, and you know, I can do the square, the cut the circle through the middle for the bearing, square on this side. Because I've got the vise set up, I can do, um, I think I can do buttons okay. That should be, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Almost, I doubt I'll get it done tomorrow. I think I can have a spinner finished tomorrow though. Most likely without buttons, we'll see how it goes. But this is the end of part one. I will of course leave you with a quote. It is by Seneca and he said, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. <laughs>